Okay, you guys ready this morning? Turn to the person next to you say, I'm ready to be in church. Turn to the person next to you say, are you ready to be in church? Turn to the person next to you say, yes, I am. Very good. Let's see your Bibles this morning. Say Jesus. Say word one more time. Sorry, my bad. Say word. Let's see your pen. Say pens. Let's see your lesson plan. Turn to Daniel chapter 3. Uh, 6. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's give a shout out to all the people who do the sound light and video and all this stuff they put up here. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Tell those boys back up in the booth what's happening. Hey, ask them, can they put the, uh, uh, oh, this is the fine line. Okay. Uh, I like that whole background with all the words, but we'll see. Okay. That's okay. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your goodness. Thank you so much for patience with us. And I pray that you bless us and challenge us. And I pray that people would make a life changing decision today. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. What will you do if your faith became illegal? And if you exercise your faith, you would face legal consequences. Now, I'm not saying that because I believe it's going to come, but I, even though I do. But the story we're going to look at is about a guy named Daniel. Everyone say Daniel. Daniel, Daniel was kidnapped along with his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were the Chaldean names. They were kidnapped and taken to, to Babylon. And when they went to Babylon, they, they served in the government there from little kids because God blessed them. We're going to see in a minute why. And all through their life, they had situations where their faith was made illegal and they had to confront a life and death situation. Either I stand up for my faith and die, so they were threatened, or I bow down to the idols of the world and compromise my faith. This is a struggle that we all have as we walk this fine line of being in the world but not of the world. Is that you're trying to be accepted and have friends and operate in the world and get along and have a job, but you also have a faith you have to live up to. And it's a conflict, and it's going to get more and more conflict. If you're watching the news, there's no, no mystery that the world is going through this economy crisis. Trust me, God is involved in that somehow. Trust me that that's part of his unfolding plan. And in Revelation, it talks about one day there's going to be a one-world government and a one-world economic system. One world. It just happened right before your eyes. You just saw it. It's a global market. God's doing something. It's way bigger than the governments of the world. Obviously, when you hear the news, what do they say? We don't know what to do because God is up here doing something. And so you better hold on to your faith because it's coming and coming fast. And so there's going to come a day where you have to say, what, what is my faith and will I live up to it and stand up to it when, when it gets really tough, okay? And it's going to get really tough. But if your faith is strong, it'll be exciting. I love roller coasters. How many of you love roller coasters? Love, and I love sitting in the front seat and putting your hands up. That's right. And I had my daughter on there a few years ago. We were somewhere, I can't remember where, and I said, look, you got to put your hands up. And we just... You know, go and, and, you know, you ever go to the end of the roller coaster and you don't want to get out and say, can I, I pay, can I just stay here? No, you got to get out and get back in line. We just like five times in a row, just keep going, going, going. That's how your life is going to be when you hold on to the Lord. Okay? So let's read the story. Let's read the story. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel is the Old Testament version of the book of Revelation. In the book of Daniel, Daniel sees visions, he gets visions, he interprets dreams all throughout the book. And it's all about end times and the future. And so it's the Old Testament version of the book of Revelation. And in this particular story, he is going to be threatened that he's going to be told that if you don't do something, you're going to die. Okay? Let's look. Let's look at our notes. Verse 1, chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one that the satraps may give a account to them so that the king would not suffer a loss. So basically, the king had 120 leaders, governmental leaders, and over those 120 were three guys, let's say 40 each. And Daniel was one of those three. And all the 120 ran all the affairs of the country, and they reported to the three, and there were three reported to the king. Okay, look what it says in verse 3. Daniel, and this Daniel, distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because of an excellent spirit was in him. Say excellent. The three governors who oversaw the 120, Daniel was 
the best one, because of his spirit. Everyone say spirit. spirit. What's going to make you head and shoulders above anybody else is your spirit, your relationship with God, God's ability to speak through you and, and create through you and rule through you and love through you and have compassion through you. That's what's going to make you different. That's what's going to set you apart. And by the way, don't worry that man has to always recognize it. As long as God acknowledges it, you're on good ground. Because God will promote you at the due time. I, I, bought, I sold a car. When I was playing football, I, I bought this Mercedes Benz. It was the worst thing I ever did. Even when I bought it, I didn't know why I was buying it. It was, it was, a, it was a clunker. I mean, they, the, 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 the dealer sent me a bill even when I just drove past the dealer. He <laughs> said, so we saw your car. Here's a $50 bill. You, you know, we just looked at it. It was just so expensive. So I remember when I sold it, I was so happy to see the guy drive it away. And when he drove the car away, he literally said these words to me. I don't know why I'm buying. He signed the papers. I don't know why I'm buying this car. I don't need a car. And I was sitting there, I didn't say a word. I was like, you know, I ain't trying to talk him out of it. I was like, hey, praise the Lord. I know why you're buying it. God don't want me to have it. <laughs> God will move you around even when man doesn't want you to be moved around. As long as you have an excellent spirit. Look what it says in verse 4. It says, um, verse 3, this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find charge nor fault because he was faithful and nor was there error or fault found in him. So what happened was the king said, I like Daniel more than anybody. I think I'm going to promote him above everybody. And the other governors, the two other governors and the, and the satraps and all the other officials got jealous. And they says, we got to find something wrong with Daniel so we can go to the king and say he's not doing his job. But the Bible says they couldn't. They couldn't. He was perfect in all ways. I'm saying he was a perfect man, but he did everything right. And they said, how do, we, how do we catch him in something? They couldn't. You want to be that Christian that when your critics look at you, they can't catch you in anything legit. They always lie, but they can't catch you in anything legit. Look in your notes. Number one, live a life blameless before your enemies. Everyone say blameless. Amen. That when they say this person lied, oh, no, they didn't. This person gossiped, oh, no, they didn't. This person came late. Uh, no, they didn't. This person did a sloppy job. Uh, no, they didn't. We, can't, we don't have anything. That's what, who Daniel was. He was on his job. He was a man of God. God spoke to him. Look what it says in verse 4. So the governors and satraps sought, find, sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, concerning his job, but they could not. Because he was, he, he was no charge or fault because he was faithful, and nor was there error or fault found in him. Verse 5, then these men said, we shall not find any charge against Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In other words, the only way we can get him is if we make his religion, his faith in God, illegal. Because we know he won't deny his God. Are you that type of person? Are you the type of person who no matter what, you will not deny your God? That no matter what you are going to pray, no matter what you're going to trust God, no matter what you're going to do what the Bible says, no matter what you're going to find out what the Bible says, if you don't know, and you're going to do it. You, that's the kind of person you want to be because when hard times comes, everything else is going to shake up. The only rock you have to stand on is Jesus. And so you have to practice now when things are a little easier than they will be. Because if you have a custom and a habit of doing the right thing, you will always do the right thing, even when times get hard. Look what it says in verse 6. So the governors and satraps thronged before the king and said to the king, King Darius, live forever. And they said, you know, basically you the man. All the governors of the kingdom, there's only three and, and two of them, and, and Daniel wasn't one of them. So me and this other guy of the kingdom, the administrators, the satraps, the counselors, the advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. So what happened was when, with Daniel not there, with Daniel not there, they made a law, and they went to the king and said, is this a good idea that if anyone prays to anything else other than you, because we know Daniel won't, but they didn't tell him that, that they should be thrown in the lion's den. Look what it says in verse 8. Now, O king, establish a decree, sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, the king signed the decree. Here's the law. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, if the king signed the decree, he himself could not undo the decree. Once he signed it, it was law for 30 days, and not even he could change it. So they tricked the king to make this law. 
Why? Because Daniel was a blameless man, and they knew that Daniel would never, ever, ever compromise his faith. How? Turn to chapter 1. Chapter 1. This is the type of reputation I would encourage you to strive to have. In Daniel chapter 1, when he was kidnapped, they brought him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had different names. These, those were their Chaldean names. They brought them, and they trained them for three years to be King Nebuchadnezzar's flunkies. And they fed them Chaldean food and played Chaldean music and had them read Chaldean books to brainwash them because they were noble, intelligent. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, listen, king, or, or to their, their supervisor, we want to eat our food and drink our water and eat our vegetables and watch after 10 days if we aren't smarter than the Chaldean boys you're going to train up in your system. They were faithful. And look what it says in verse 12. It says, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. As you see fit, so deal with your servants. Look at verse 19. The king interviewed them, and among them all, among them all none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, they served before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined, he found them ten times. Everyone say ten times. Ten. Say ten times. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in the realm. And Daniel continued to the first year of King Cyrus. In other words, they said, we're going to do it God's way. Say God's way. You want to make sure you live God's way. A lot of y'all on a fast right now. What God is showing you is that you don't need what you thought you needed. That you're stronger, you're stronger than you thought you'd be after almost three weeks, 18 days. That you're starting to think clearly and God's giving you a whole new perspective. You want to do it God's way. You don't want to be dependent on the world. Daniel said, you let us do it God's way. We'll be smarter than you. Look what it says in, in chapter 2. In chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And in his dream, he, he, he had a dream and he called all his counselors and all his magicians. And he says, listen, I had a dream. I want you to tell me what my dream was. And I want you to tell me what my dream meant. And his magician says, okay, king, well, you tell us what the dream was and we'll tell you what it meant. He said, no, no, you don't understand. I want you to tell me what my dream was, and I want you to tell me what it meant. They go, King, while you were asleep with your woman, we were asleep with our women. I was drooling on my pillow when you were drooling on your pillow. So how am I going to know what's going on in your head? He says, look, if you don't tell me what my dream was and what it meant, I'm going to kill you. This is in chapter 2. So none of them would do it, obviously. So never can I start killing them. Daniel said, stop. We will go pray to the God of heaven. And he will tell us what your dream was and what it meant. And he did. He told them. He said, you saw an image of a man. He, tell, he explains everything to him. And look what happens in chapter 2, verse 46, after he told him the dream. King, chapter 2, verse 46, King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face prostrate before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. And the king answered to Daniel and said, truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings. And a revealer of secrets, since you could reveal the secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him great gifts, and he made him a ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel petitioned the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. What happened? Daniel says, the God I serve can do what your boys can't do. That's the person you want to be. I don't care what your job is. I don't care if you work at McDonald's. I don't care if you sweep the street. I don't care if you're a cop, you're a nurse. Whatever God, whatever, who, whatever you do, God knows your job better than you. And God wants to bless you in your job. He wants to bless you in your life. But you have to purpose in your heart that no matter what the world says, I'm not going to violate the word of God. And when God tells me to do something a little different, as long as I'm not breaking a law, and God speaks to me and tells me to go over here and go over there, say this, God gives you a word of knowledge, you listen to him, and people will scratch their head and go, I don't get it. You got something I don't got. Because when you ask Christ to be your Savior and the living God, the creator of the universe, lives inside of you, you have access to all the power there is and all the wisdom there is and all the love there is. That's what God wants to reveal to you. But you have to be like Daniel where through thick and thin, I trust him.
Though God will slay me, yet I will trust him. Though I go through hell, he still will be there with me. And so look, t- turn to Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar had another vision. And he says, Daniel, you are the reveal of secrets. Please tell me what my, vision, what my vision means. And he says, you saw a tree. And the tree was cut down. What's going to happen to you, Nebuchadnezzar, is that you are very powerful. You are very awesome. And unless you humble yourself, you're going to be eating grass like animals. Nebuchadnezzar said, okay. He listened, but he didn't obey. Nebuchadnezzar was walking around his garden. He's looking at how powerful he was and how rich he was. His pride was puffed up. And all of a sudden, he went crazy. And he grew long nails. Over time, he grew feathers like eagles. And he started eating the grass, just like Daniel said. And then look what happened. And my point in telling you this is that when you walk with God, God is going to challenge you to say things to people they don't want to hear. But you've got to say it and say it in love. So he said, Nebuchadnezzar, you came to me. Here's what happened. And look what it says in verse uh, uh, 30, 34. It says, at the end of the time, Nebuchadnezzar lifted his eyes to heaven and, and uh, lifted his eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praise and honor him who lives forever. For his dominion is everlasting dominion, his kingdom from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. This is Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful man in the world, saying this because he realized that the God of Daniel humbled him. And it says, and among the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain his hand or say, what have you done? Verse 36, at that same time, my reason returned to me. When he confessed, his reason returned to him for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose, whose works are truth. Everyone say truth. And his ways, justice. Say justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. My point is this, is when you walk with God, even when you confront your enemies, at some point, God will reveal to them what you have been saying, what you have been doing is true. What you have been representing is true. All those people outside right now who are serving God, when they, now that they're serving God, God is showing them things he didn't show them before. God is doing things through them he didn't do before. And they have a whole new perspective on the king of heaven. You all have an opportunity to do something in San Diego, whatever it is, is that you will go out there and join one of those ministries and say, God, what do you want from me? Let me stop just trying to survive through life being this Christian, sometimes incognito, not wanting anyone to see me. <laughs> You'll get that tomorrow when you think about it. But you don't want anyone to know you're a Christian. You don't carry your Bible. You don't pray. And you don't want anyone to know that you, you could be one of those labeled people. No, 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 no. Instead, say, no, Lord, you have something for me to do. There's something for me to do in this world. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you some pictures right here. You know the the ministry, the duh ministry, the garbage ministry, collecting garbage. Because of the garbage, the bottles and cans they collected, all 36 of these kids now get food for one year and water for one year. I, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine how many kids could get help if you just brought your garbage. You give it to the garbage man. You put it in your blue thing, right, in the blue can. Don't put it in the blue can. Bring it here. Oh, I got to bring my garbage to church. Yeah, you bring your spiritual garbage to church. <laughs> you bring your emotional garbage to church. Go help a kid out. There's people from this community that don't even go to church here. They walk and bring their garbage over there. And they go right back home. Praise the Lord. Go out there and join one of those ministries. Let me, let me read a few to you because we have some time here. Let me read a few to you. I'm just going to read these off because we, we have, these are sports ministries. Just this list right here. These are the sports. What are these sports ministries designed to do? To share the gospel through sports. Basketball, boxing. Boxing, they beat you up. Then they tell you to get saved or to beat you up again. Expeditions, four, uh, four-wheel drive ministry, fitness and nutrition, football ministry. Of course, that's the best one of all. Uh, golf ministry, hip-hop ministry, hula. Uh, so if you can't hip-hop, you can hula. Uh, <laughs> martial arts ministry, mountain bike ministry, uh, uh, rock climbing, runners ministry, sailing ministry, skateboard ministry, soccer ministry, softball ministry, surfing ministry, volleyball ministry. And by the way, it, what does that mean? You, 
do I have to be able to share my faith? Well, not first. Just go do it. Just go hang out and watch what God's doing. Let me show you these other ministries. Uh, adult ministry, going to the strip clubs, women only. The police department, San Diego Police Department, is now partnering with that ministry to help them minister to girls who are going to strip clubs. <laughs> Arts and performance, cancer ministry. You heard of a young lady uh, with a pink shirt. Matter of fact, that young lady with a pink shirt who gave the testimony about the cancer ministry, when she was a teenager, I was a youth pastor, like 20 years ago or something like that. So it's good to see us still. Computer service, geek, Jesus geeks, people who can do, you know, mm, these kind of dudes like that. Okay. <laughs> Our life depends on those brothers too. <laughs> convalescent ministry. They, got, they go to 43 convalescent homes. They're in a convalescent home or several every single day of the week. And they just got donated a van where they can now take people from the convalescent homes to church, uh, 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 bring, bring them to church. <laughs> Death ministry. Interpreters. We need interpreters. We have a deaf foster home. At the time we got our deaf foster home, we were the only deaf foster home in San Diego County. Church doing that. Disabilities ministry. Love them up ministries. Um, amen. Praise the Lord. Domestic violence. I was, uh, I don't know, about a year ago, I, was, I had to write something, and I had to write a story, and I needed to interview a young lady who had been um, sexually assaulted. I was like, how am I going to find a young lady to be sexually assaulted and ask her kind of interview? But I had to, you know, I just, it was something I had to do. So I'm sitting in this restaurant, uh, eating breakfast with my, my wife and my parents, and, and this couple sit next to me. And the lady says, uh, they both said, how you doing? We go to the Rock. I said, how you doing? I said, and we started talking. And I said, what do you do? She says, well, I'm starting a ministry at the Rock for women who have been sexually assaulted. I've been sexually assaulted. I go around and speak to high school kids all about it, tell my story. I was like, what? <laughs> a lot of you ladies have been sexually assaulted. Yeah. Two things. God wants to heal you, and he de that's a definite, and he can, not necessarily have to, absolutely not have to, but he can use that if he calls you to help somebody else. There's a lady out there. She's telling a story. Go, go listen. Go check her out. Um, eating disorder. Uh, again. <laughs> Three snaps in the Z now. <laughs> 200 women signed up for this when it first started. 200 right away. Boom. Again, God might have got you through. Go help somebody else. Evangelism ministry, fishers of men, food service ministry, uh, foster youth, home repair, homeless bread of life. They're on the street seven days a week. Amen, amen, amen. As a matter of fact, there's a story here about a guy who was homeless. They got him a job. He got an apartment. He got his family back, and he's living life and not live on the street. Isn't that what's supposed to happen? It's supposed to get people off the street? <laughs> Human trafficking, their own El Cajon Boulevard, confronting pimps and prostitutes, go out there and help them. Inner city youth mint tutoring, if you want to tutor somebody. Mexican Christian missions, I didn't even know this was going on. A thousand people at a crusade they had in Mexico. Praise the Lord. Oh, habla Espanol. I wasn't there, uh, <laughs> obviously. Military ministry, amen, amen, military ministry. The military ministry shares the gospel with all the recruits over here at MCRD every Sunday. They come in there, they sit, they're scared of death, and they get the gospel, they get saved, they get a 21 jump start, the same book we give here when people get saved, and then they go out and they go wherever all around the world. Every Sunday they're over there, right down the street. Did you know that? Did you know that? Amen. You can go. You can go. My ministry, mom's ministry. If you're a mom, mom's ministry, photography ministry, prison ministry. How many of y'all never been in a prison before? Okay, you need to go. I'm not saying you need to get arrested, but you need to go. <laughs> My first prison experience, I went to five prisons in three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think it was five. I went to Terminal Island Friday night, and then over the next two days, we went to Norco Women's Facility, Chino, Tehachapi, Long Park. I think that's five. And every prison, we had complications getting in because the devil didn't want us to get in. And so we would pray, dear Lord, please, please open, the, you know, we resist the devil in Jesus' name. We bind him in Jesus' name. And I'm a new Christian. I don't know what all that stuff means. I'm just going, yeah, praise the Lord. Bind somebody in gates of hell. I'm, I thought it was a gate to the prison. I don't understand. But I'm just, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And, and, and then after we would pray, I would just go by myself. I was a young Christian. And I'd go by myself and say, dear Lord, if you don't want me to get in, I'm good with that. <laughs> My prayers never worked. I always got in, and it was the bomb. It was the bomb. Matter of fact, we had a guy named, uh, on, a, on a San Diego Charger named Dennis McKnight. He was 265 pounds. Anybody remember Conan the Barbarian? Okay, Conan, me and Conan are boys from back east. We, um, 
just boys, and, and it took me three hours to convince him to go into prison. He's 6'4", 265 pounds, and then he was. And I'm like, Dennis, you're going to be the biggest, strongest, ugliest dude in here. Ain't nobody going to bother you. He goes, I know I'm ugly, but I don't want to go in there. Make a long story short, we go in, and we, have to, we, we drove through the, the prison. Then we go to the chapel, and we have to now walk from the chapel through the yard to the gate. You know who is the last person strolling through the yard with his new friend like he's on a date? Because <laughs> he got his heart broke. He got his heart broke. When you take the comfort God has given you and you share it with someone else, your heart gets broke. And God re- shows you why you are alive. You are not alive to serve yourself. You're alive to serve him and serve other people. That's what we're alive for. And you will get blessed. You'll be more blessed giving than receiving. You will receive when you give. But if all you do is take, 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 you'll die. Okay? There's two seas in, in Jerusalem. And is one is the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on the planet Earth. There's nothing living in the Dead Sea. And the Sea of Galilee has life and fish in it. And the river between is the Jordan River. And the water flows from the Jordan River, it flows into the Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, and then through and then between the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea. The reason the Dead Sea is dead is because the water goes in and never leaves. It just takes, takes, takes. That kills you. You want stuff to come in and out. Bless me, God, and pass it on. Okay? Let's look at our notes. I mean, let's look at the Bible. Let's keep reading. It says, verse 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. It says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. When Daniel knew, if you pray, you will die. He went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before to God, as was his custom in early days. In your notes, write down this. Establish a prayer custom. In other words, when do you pray? Where do you pray? And how do you pray? Daniel said, oh, I can't pray. I'm going to the lion's den? Okay. Thanks. He went home, opens his window. I'm going to make sure y'all see me. And he knelt down three times that day and said, I want to make sure you get it. I ain't bowing to your idol. I'm going to do what I got to do. Y'all do what you got to do. When do you pray? How faithful are you to what God calls you to do? Or when you hear some criticism coming, you back off. God is saying, trust me. Trust me. The same God that saved Daniel is going to save you and me. Look what it says in verse 11. These men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast in the lion's den? Yes. This thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Verse 13. He answered and said before the king that Daniel, who is one of those captains of Judah, does not show due regard, O king, for the decree that you have signed and makes petition to uh, three times a day. Verse 14. The king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said, King, O king, know that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king has signed can be changed. So the king gave a command. They brought Daniel to cast him in the lion's den. But the king spoke to Daniel saying, Your God. Everyone say, Your God. God. If you walk with God, people will know your God. If you walk with God, people will respect your God. If you walk with God. They will fear your God. They may not tell you. It says, verse 16, the last sentence, your God whom you serve, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might might not be changed. What they would do, they put his clay seal on the rock, and they would take their ring and press the imprint into the seal, and no one can change it, not even the king. He's in there. got to spend the night all night. Look what the king did, verse 18. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought to him. Also his sleep went from him. And the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with lamenting voice, Daniel. The king spoke, Daniel, your servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? If you walk with God, people will know your God. They will respect your God, and they will expect your God. 
to do something that their God can't do. The question is, do you walk with God? Is your life a life where people see you and they want what you have? They wonder what you have. They can't get over how you got what you got. You're just like them, but you're not like them. This was Daniel. And the king said, he says, I know your God. I've seen your God work in your life. I've heard of your God working in your life. And I know that your God can deliver you from that line. You have to know first and believe that your God can deliver you from the line. Whatever you are facing, financial trouble, emotional trouble, relationship trouble, career trouble, you got laid off, your God, this God, can deliver you. You need to know that. You need to know that. Look what it says in, in, in verse 21. Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God, verse 22, my God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions so they have not hurt me because I was found innocent. Everyone say found innocent. In your notes, write down number three, seek innocence before God. If you want God to stand in your corner, you got to stand in his. If you want God to honor you, you got to honor him. If you want God to come through strong in your behalf and do amazing things, trust me, he does, still does amazing things. You have to trust him. You have to be willing to walk into a scary situation out of obedience, knowing he will trust him. If I'm Daniel, I'm 70-something years old, I've been serving faithfully since I was a teenager, I've been standing for God since I was a teenager, why has God still put me in this situation as an old man? Why don't he put some of those young dudes? Why is he still messing with me? I have a theory. It's that God said, Daniel, if I put one of those young dudes in there, They'd be so scared and jittery, the lions would eat them just to shut them up. (laughs) I knew you can handle it. God knows you can handle what you're going through. just wants you to trust him. He knows you can handle it. And look what happened. Verse 23. The king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury was found on him because he believed in his God. Verse 24, the king gave the command and they brought these men who had accused Daniel and cast them into the den and their children and their wives. So in other words, the guys who, tried to, who tricked the king to put Daniel in there, what well, the king says, I want all y'all to come and by the way, bring your families. Your sin will find you out and your family. Some of our families are jacked up because of us. Some of our families are jacked up because of our parents. Sin will be passed on. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. Look what it says. Verse 24. And the king gave a command. They brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them. Look what it says. And broke all their bones in pieces before they came to the bottom of the floor. These lions. Now, anybody ever touch a lion? I was at the zoo once in, behind the stage, and we got to see this, this white tiger. And there was a chain link fence, and the tiger was on the other side of the fence. And they said, please don't put your hands in the fence. I was like, forgive me, Father, because I'm about to sin. <laughs> and the lion was right here. He was. He was right here. And I was like looking at him going, you are so beautiful. He was going, I want to eat you right now. <laughs> he was like this big. And he was, you know, we were just standing, just kind of, kind of, you know, bonding a little bit, kind of telecommunicating. And he was right here. He couldn't get through the fence. So when he turned his head, I stuck my finger through the fence just because I wanted to touch him. His hair was like broom bristles. Imagine laying in a hole with a whole bunch of them. Daniel just laid there all night. And you know what God says? They will not hurt you unless I let them. You trust me. Look what the Bible says in verse 25. King Darius wrote to all the peoples and nations that dwell on the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, a steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. His dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Here's my point to you. 
is that God is saying to you, if you live for me and you trust me through thick and thin, I will not only honor you, but I will draw men to myself through your life. You don't have to preach with your words all the time. You preach with your actions all the time. And there are some of you right now who are going through some stuff. You are being lowered into the lion's den or you are in the lion's den and they're chewing on your leg. And you don't know what to do. We want to pray for you. Some of y'all need to ask Jesus to be your savior. Some of y'all need prayer. Some of y'all need encouragement. Some of you are sick. We want to pray for you. In a minute, we're going to bow our heads. And God is telling you, I know the lion's den you're in. I know it. But you have to trust me and do it my way. Stop trying to do it your way. Stop trying to come to church once a week and thinking that's it. I want your whole heart. And whether you're surrendering your life in its salvation to ask Christ to be your Savior, or you're simply saying, God, I am tired. How many of y'all are tired? I'm tired. I'm with you. And God is saying, if you trust me, you will mount up like with eagle's wings, and I will be the wind beneath your wings. I will strengthen you, and you will not grow weary, but you have to trust me my way. So let's all bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, dear Lord, there are people here today, <clears throat> like Daniel, they're being lowered into the den, or they're in it. Their faith is being challenged. Their commitment is being stretched. They doubt. They're scared. But in the end, they know they need you. They need you really bad. If you would like to give your life to Jesus, if you would like to receive prayer from us, just pray this prayer with me. In the privacy of your heart, say, Dear God, I'm tired. I need you. I've been trying to do it alone. Jesus, forgive me. I surrender my life, my heart to you. Take over my life right now. Take over my burden. Take over my pain. Thank you. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you pray that prayer, I'm just going to ask you right now as the music's playing, just get up. Stand up in your seat right where you're at and acknowledge God's touching your life. Acknowledge your need for God. God bless you. 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 We see you all over on all levels in the balcony down here. God bless you. Anybody else? God is saying, come on. I want to help you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Stay standing. Good. God bless you. Good. God bless you. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. Now we're going to ask all y'all who are standing to do one more thing. As we welcome you to the family of God, in a minute we're going to ask you to come down to the altar. If you're up in the balcony, all you have to do is turn around and walk up, and the ushers will bring you down. So everybody who's standing, we're going to ask you to come out of your seat and come on down to the altar. Let's give them a hand as they come on down. Say, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.
God bless you. We have all been in a lion's den. Some of us are in it now. And it's okay. God knows and he controls the lions. He knows how much you can take. He knows what he's doing. But you have to trust him. And if you trust him, he will get you through and you will be so glad you went through it. So I want to encourage all y'all to trust him. Exactly what you're dealing with right now. He will get you through. Lord, thank you so much for being a, a God who closes the mouths of lions. Thank you that you are faithful to get us through. And I pray that all of us would just hold on and wait to see the salvation of God. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for these stories. Thank you for Daniel trusting you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask all y'all to turn this way and let's give them a hand as they go out this way.